there, another week has passed and I'm delighted to see you all again in Culture Mosaic. As always, we'll give you the latest updates on the culture scene here in Vietnam. Now, as Hanoi is currently in its most beautiful season of the year to many people, which is autumn, our show today will take you on a traditional culinary journey across the capital city in this season. But there will not be just food, so sit back and enjoy. Millet Rice Cracker Preserve in Hanoi. The Caucasian Chop Circle to open in Hanoi. And Hanoi Street Food in the eyes of international tourists. We're now starting off with the most outstanding events that stirred up the local culture scene over the last week. The 2014 Kunsun Kipak Autumn Festival kicked off on Wednesday in Haizung Province with rituals, traditional games, and culture and tourist activities. The annual event commemorates Chen Hung Dao, one of the most revered figures in Vietnam's history for his leading role in the country's victory over Mongolian invaders in the 13th century. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism recognized the Gunsun Kipak Spring and Autumn Festivals as national intangible cultural heritages in 2013. The event is a major part of Haizun's plan to attract tourists to the province and the Red River Delta. The Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism has also recognized 19 new elements of national cultural heritage. These include literature, folk art performances, social practices and beliefs, traditional handicrafts and folk festivals. They include the Nome script of the Tai ethnic people in Bakkan province, Hat Boy, a traditional opera singing of Bingding province, stone carving arts in the marble mountains of Da Nang city, and Tung of War by ethnic groups in Lao Cai province, to name a few. The recognition is hoped to raise the awareness of a cultural heritage, as well as the efforts by the authorities and community to preserve them. Now, a collection of historical records from the former French government in southern Vietnam will be filed for UNESCO's Memory of the World program in the Asia-Pacific region by the end of October this year. Our reporter Ling Hương visits the Ho Chi Minh City-based National Archives Center No. 2, where the documents are stored to explore the archive's significance in this modern day. Amounting to over 2,400 meters of text, the archive of wartime southern Vietnam is mostly written in French, with a small portion written in Vietnamese, ancient Chinese characters, Khmer, Japanese, English, Italian and Dutch. Có 570 mét tài liệu của Phong đã được chỉnh lý sơ bộ với số lượng là gần 13.000 hồ sơ để tạo điều kiện cho công tác quản lý và công tác khai thác sử dụng tài liệu của các nhà khoa học trong nước và quốc tế. Dr. Shiochi Musaya sits in this reading room at the National Archive Center 2 every day over the last couple of years to study these documents for his research on the Japan-Vietnam relation during the 1940s, 1950s. So after the withdrawal of the French troops, uh, the former uh, Saigon government held those uh, precious documents and, and uh, those are uh, uh, taken over uh, by the new government. So I, I appreciate those documents uh, have been uh, preserved in such a good shape. Professor Shiraishi here is only one among many scholars who have been using this collection of historical records released and received by the Southern Vietnam governor during the resistance war against French colonialists. According to figures from the National Archive Center 2 in Ho Chi Minh City between 1976 and 2013 using this archive. Dr. Le Hiu Phuoc from Ho Chi Minh City University of Social Sciences and Humanities attributes his successful dissertation on Gunda prison to the original documents he found from the archive. He asserts this archive has tremendous value in many fields. Không chỉ có những cái công trình khoa học mà ngay những cái dự án phát triển kinh tế xã hội trong hiện tại và tương lai thì cũng cần nhìn lại cái kho dữ liệu đó 
Thí dụ một cái dự án xây dựng đường sắt về miền Tây Nam Bộ thì Những cái dự án để phát triển cái hệ thống giao thông vận tải Rồi những cái dự án để phát triển thủy điện Những cái dự án để quy hoạch lại cái địa giới hành chính Thì tất cả những cái này đều cần phải đọc lại những cái sử liệu According to Director General of the Department of State Records and Archive, Dr. Vu Thị Minh Hương, this collection meets the criteria for being recognized as a UNESCO heritage. The khối tài liệu của Phong Thống Nước Nam Kỳ thể hiện rõ cái mối quan hệ quốc tế giữa Nam Kỳ trong suốt giai đoạn 1858 đến năm 1945 với lại tất cả các quốc gia khác ở trên thế giới chính vì thế cho nên nó đây cũng là một cái tiêu chí mà nó đáp ứng với các cái tiêu chí của UNESCO. Once recognized by the UNESCO, the archive will become the fifth one from Vietnam to gain the documentary heritage status. This will improve its preservation and people's chance to access the valuable historical records. Vietnamese tourism ambassador to Europe Bobby Chin has introduced foreign tourists to Singapore and local islanders to genuine Vietnamese dishes from September the 6th to the 9th at Modern Peak Heritage Hotel Sentosa. Bobby invited visitors to sample such dishes as lotus root salad, pomelo salad with crabs, mushroom steamed crepe paper rolls, crepe paper rolls with crispy aromatic duck, and various fish dishes. He said all the ingredients are made in or originated from Vietnam. He specifically singled out the Vietnamese fish sauce and tuna for the delicious and refreshing taste. Bobby Jean appointed the Vietnamese tourism ambassador to Europe from July 2014 to July 2017. After Singapore, Bobby will continue his mission in European countries. So that's a recap of the most vibrant culture events of the last week. Now, millet's rice cracker is a common delicacy of Vietnam. It is widely available in many areas. But residents in Phu Thượng Wat of Hanoi have a long-standing tradition of selling this special cracker via street vendors to the people across the city. Besides this delightful taste that crackers in other regions cannot compare, Phu Thượng Wat considers this a trademark and local residents are doing their best to preserve this cracker-making tradition. The millet rice cracker is a popular specialty in Hanoi. It is made using a crunchy baked rice cracker with millet spread on top and sprinkled with ground green bean and sugar. Cooking millet until it becomes sticky like glutinous rice is a time-consuming process that requires great skill. Chen Thị Chuan has more than 20 years' experience making millet rice crackers in Phu Thượng village. Her crackers are especially tasty thanks to a delicious millet paste. She says that the millet has to be stirred constantly at a low heat for the grains to turn into a glutinous paste. Khi nấu ấy, thì phải nấu kê không, chứ không pha trộn. Đấy. Thì là kê vừa béo, vừa ngậy, vừa ngon. Millet paste requires over an hour of cooking to be ready. Afterwards, Tuan pours it into small bowls to cool down before the paste can be spread onto rice crackers. Ground green bean is another crucial ingredient in this specialty. Thoroughly steamed green bean will be ground into powder and molded into bowls. The final step is to slide rice crackers into small segments prior to spreading the millet paste and sprinkling the ground green bean and sugar on top. This millet cake has to be eaten right away before it becomes soggy and you can taste the richness and the sweetness in the millet and the green bean paste. So no wonder so many people still enjoy this special delicacy. People from the village and outsiders chew her crackers because they are so delicious. Nghị is one of her regular customers. She shares that all her friends prefer Phu Thượng's millet rice crackers to any other crackers. 
phường phú thượng nhất là kê đừng bao giờ để bỏ phí đi mai một đi mà cái đó nó sẽ bởi vì nó là nghề truyền thống mà từ cha ông ta từ trước tới nay của phường phú thượng này đã từng làm các cụ trước cũng làm rất là nhiều và đi bán và bao giờ cái kê cũng rất là ngon thế nhưng đến nay cái số người đi bán kê mà ngon như của bà chuẩn hầu như không có Like many other villagers in Phú Thượng Wood, Nguyễn Thị Đỏ has been making millet rice crackers for almost 30 years now. She prepares crackers and sells them every day at the local village hall or in the old quarters of Hanoi. It has become a vital daily routine for her. Cô đi cái nghề này nó truyền thống của làng cha bố mẹ ông bà rồi bố mẹ để lại cái nghề này. Thì bây giờ là cô vẫn cứ theo đuổi cái nghề này. Để bao giờ mà cô không đi được nữa thì cô mới thôi cái nghề này là cái nghề của làng. Her vending site attracts many customers each time and it only takes a few hours until the crackers are completely sold out. Mình cảm thấy nó rất là ngon và ngậy, nhất là mùi của dừa thơm và ngọt. Uh, có vị thơm của gạo nếp ấy. Và và giòn của bánh đan bánh đa kê hồi nhỏ thì mình cũng được ăn rất là nhiều nhưng mà giờ nấu cũng chưa được ăn nên giờ ăn rất là cảm thấy rất là nhớ hương vị ngày xưa. In an age where this specialty is not as popular as it used to be, people in Phú Thượng Wood are continuing their tradition of making millet rice crackers. It is an inseparable part of their daily lives in working with vendors across Hanoi to bring their trademark specialty to others. You're tuning in to Culture Mosaic, a weekly journal featuring the rich cultural diversity of the nation and international cultural events happening around the country. We hope to become the rich Canadian artists and the work with our viewers out there. So don't go away. We have a lot more in this week's installment coming for you in just a moment. The Caucasian Chalk Circle, an epic theatre performance by late German playwright Bertolt Brach, will open at Hanoi Youth Theatre on September the 17th. The event is considered a new step in bringing Vietnamese contemporary theatre to the international community. In this week's edition of On the Mic, VTV reporter Huyen Chi sit down with the play's director, Dominic Grenther, to find out more about this project. Written in 1944, this fresh epic follows the journey of a servant girl during wartime who saves the life of an abandoned baby. When the mother returns to claim him, however, their fates lie in the hands of a wily, unpredictable judge. The Caucasian Chalk Circle features actors from the Hanoi Youth Theatre under the direction of German director Dominique Gunther. Thank you so much, Dominique, for joining us here today on On The Mic. Um, first question for you is, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the play and how did the play translate from German to Vietnamese? Yes, it's a, a famous play of Bertolt Brecht, so one, of the fa one of the famous uh, writer in Germany. From, um, and he wrote this play in, uh, during the 40s. It's of course a little bit uh, a play about a, a crisis situation. And the main subjects are that it's about people who are very egoistic and they all think of their own profit in, in times of crisis, like a war. So I think it's really, uh, really still uh, uh, important to do this play. Um, I was working with a translator from, from Hanoi. He's a kind of also expert of Brecht. He knows his literature. He used the, the language of Brecht and tried really to translate it in a, in a Vietnamese way, but not kind of, he uses modern words. What makes the Caucasian Chalk Circle so successful in the past, and how do you expect the Vietnamese audience will react? Yes, in that time, uh, Brecht um, it was the first, like the first time he did this open theater thing. It's, it's an adventure story, it's really, it's a good story writer, and he, uh, he put this shock circle example that there is a judge doing a circle on the floor where he 
you have to put a son and two mothers uh, raping at him. He discuss what is justice. This is a really good good thing to think about. So I think the people like really the story. Um, we have this main character as a maid who gets by accident a baby, and uh, she she has to to run away, and soldiers behind her, and she she wanna uh, she need help, and she asks a lot of people for help, and you see they don't help her because they are afraid. I want to ask the question to the audience. I don't want to solve the problem. I can't solve the problem because it's really like 100 more years. It's the same problem we, we are not able to solve, but we can ask the question everybody. So my, I hope that they will ask themselves how to react in this situation. Sân khấu Đức là một trong những sân khấu rất văn minh của thế giới, có nhiều phá cách lớn táo bạo, mãnh liệt, thậm chí là khốc liệt. Chúng ta phải mở cửa. Nếu không thì chúng ta sẽ không biết được là thế giới hiện nay người ta đang kể chuyện ở trên sân khấu với hình thức gì, người ta đang làm những tác phẩm của ai và người ta đang được dàn dựng và diễn viên được diễn theo những phong cách như thế nào. Keeping with the original brush plot, but taking place in Hanoi, a few modern twists have been added, including the use of contemporary electronic music, breathing fresh life into the Vietnamese theater scene. Did you make any edits to make the play more relatable to the Vietnamese young audience? Of course, there's one, the first part of the play, it's especially about the problem of the Second World War, so we cut it away. So we just tell the, the, the story of the Caucasian shock circle. Um, there's one thing that in, in my my style of work is that it's a lot of uh, it's a strong playing on the stage. The, the the audience are not able to lean back. It's always happening something, and I always try to open the fourth fourth wall. I don't know if you know this word um, to go into the audience and to 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 treat the audience to be with into the show. How do you incorporate your personal style when you bring this play to the Vietnamese audience? And I need always energy on the stage and uh, I, I need to be open in, in the style and not, not too melodramatic. And I'm really lucky that I have these actors, they're really open and they really work hard. Um, they're really interested in, in a new style of playing and my strange ideas because of course I didn't know them before, they didn't know me. So uh, I, I think both sides were a little bit afraid what will happen. <laughs> uh, do we like each other or can we uh, work together? So we, after one week we were surprised. I was surprised that they are so open to me and uh, the, yeah, just want to try out everything. And they were surprised that I was so open to them and asked them what, uh, what's their own creative uh, ideas to the play. We learned that the play also features contemporary music. How does this fit in with the theme of the story? We have one figure, it's called the singer, and he's a kind of a director of, of the whole play. So this is again the open structure of Brecht, that we see one figure is not in the story really. Uh, he's telling the story and he He's using uh, uh, new electronic music and he has some sound system that he can really treat the actors. Mm -hmm. For example, if, if he says there's a war, he can press a button and we have some bomb explosion and we see that this guy is leading this process. Mm -hmm. and, and this for me makes it really interesting yeah. <laughs> um, and maybe new for, um, for uh, yeah. Vietnam. Director Dominique Gunther has directed a number of youth theater projects in Hamburg, Germany. The Caucasian Chalk Circle marks his first play in Vietnam. After a month of rehearsals, the play will open at the Hanoi Youth Theater on September 17. After the three weeks of working here in Vietnam, what did you learn from the experience? I learned that theater playing is, is, don't, is not a problem. <laughs> it makes fun. In German, actors are sometimes really like, they always have problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the theater is really strict, somehow we have clear rules and uh, it's really like, uh, yeah, we're a controlled mm -hmm. uh, system. And I'm, I like that this like, little bit chaotic uh, style that everybody is 
somehow into it and when I rehearsal everybody is coming and watching what we are doing and I like like this more community of uh, the theater is not like so strict thing of course we concentrate here also but uh, sometimes in, my, in Germany my feeling is that they do it more holy than it is. <laughs> After this play do you have any other plans to work with Vietnamese artists? Of course we're talking about it and my idea is what I want to do for the next when I work with Vietnamese theater uh, I want to ch mix actors like we have German actors playing with together with Vietnamese actors. Uh, that would be m another step of how it could be. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. I hope everybody is coming to the show. The capital city of Hanoi has such an amazing culinary culture that often surprises international tourists. Great food in the capital isn't just five-star luxury or stuffy fine dining. It's all about local specialties served fresh and simple and more often than not on the streets. Even for many tourists, it becomes a hobby that attracts them to explore Hanoi streets. So let's enjoy Hanoi street food in our connecting culture this week. Walking through the maze of bustling streets that make up Hanoi's old quarter, you can enjoy famous Hanoian dishes at local eateries. Wandering past street stalls and quiet residential lanes, you can observe local life that has changed little since Hanoi was founded more than 1,000 years ago. Today, tourists from England, Australia and India join a Hanoi street food tour in the Old Quarter. Bún cha, a popular dish in the northern region of Vietnam, is the first dish introduced on the tour. Danayan Holgia, an Australian tourist, had heard about the amazing street food in Hanoi from his friends some months ago and decided to join a street food tour at the beginning of his trip in Vietnam. I think um, people who live in Hanoi are very lucky that they have such um, a wonderful place to live in and such beautiful food. Sometimes the attractive Vietnamese foods are also the cheapest ones. For tourists, the experience of enjoying specialties on a plastic chair on the pavement is sometimes mentioned more than the food itself. Uh, I ate Vietnamese food probably four times a day, five times a day. Um, it's good sitting outside, just on the street as well. And it was good doing this tour because it meant that I could go into places that I usually wouldn't, or you could tell me what was good, so I know for future. So. <laughs> One of the most interesting things when enjoying Vietnamese cuisine at a small roadside restaurant is that you can observe the rhythm of local life. So what will happen to those who can't speak Vietnamese? They just need to point to what someone is eating and slowly let the joys of Vietnamese cuisine wash over them. I only... I only got to spend two, uh, two and a half weeks here, so there's definitely places that I'd like to stay longer or see again, for sure. A 
along with the development of tourism. The Vietnamese are familiar with foreign tourists sitting on pavements, using chopsticks to enjoy pho or bún chả. Some culinary experts commented that Vietnamese cuisine attracts tourists with its use of fresh vegetables, fruit and nuts. There is nowhere else that has the diverse culinary spectrum that Vietnam has. It is a fundamental part of the culture that has been preserved and promoted in the process of international cultural exchange. So the Hanoi's very run and delicious street food has also wrapped up our culture mosaic this week. I think I might be up for some of these street food right now. Well, until next time, feel free to contact us at culturemosaic at vtv.vn with any comments and suggestions you may have or to tell us about any culture events you've been to with your own videos as well. You can watch repeats of our program online at vtv4.vn or youtube.com slash vtv4go. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye for now.